Welcome to today's live stream. I'm super excited to welcome you here today. Before we get started and get into the really for real live, this is obviously a pre-recorded video where I can tell you a couple things and then we can get started. So uh, honestly what I'm doing is buying myself time to turn the camera on and make sure that everything sounds good. But uh, while we do that, while we wait for myself, let's go ahead and comment below. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Maybe let's start with your name and where you're watching from. And then also I'd love to hear about uh, maybe the latest project you're working on or your favorite software. So if you can post a link below, go ahead and post a link to your portfolio. We'd love to check it out and see what you're up to. And maybe even let us know what your favorite uh, software is or maybe your favorite subject. Do you like web design or print design or making t-shirts or logos or branding? I don't know. Go ahead and comment below and let us know. We'd love to check it out. And then also, if you'd love to see what I'm up to, you can check out my work at DerekMitchell.com. You can see some YouTube videos at YouTube.com slash Derek Mitchell. And then also live streaming at Behance.net slash Mitchell's Garage. So you can check me out there. And then did I say Instagram? I don't know if I said Instagram yet or not. Instagram.com slash D Mitchell Design. So hopefully there's links and buttons and stuff here. Uh, anyway, all right, guys, we're about to dive into some really cool stuff. Uh, feel free to comment in the thread, and I'd love to, again, see what you're up to, and I'll try and answer your questions as we get going, but let's go ahead and dive in. Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more. Check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today. Today's video is sponsored by the Graphic Design Bootcamp. If you're looking at becoming a graphic designer and you want to learn more about Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, creating real world projects that clients would actually pay you for, for things like logos, business cards, letterhead, and much more, check out the link below for more information and a deep discount to get started today.
Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's live stream. I'm pumped to welcome you here. Uh, so today, what I'm doing is actually a real project. I've got a client that just called me this morning, about an hour ago, and uh, they need an ad knocked out real quick. So we're gonna do that. That's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna work live. You guys can watch, look over my shoulder as we get this done. Uh, I'll give you some backstory on it. It should be fun. Also, hopefully it'll be fast because, um, because I gotta get this thing done. So uh, let me just check a couple levels on this thing real quick. How's everybody doing today? If you're on Behance, thanks for joining. I see there's a bunch of you there. Unfortunately, uh, Behance, the streaming services, currently still has the chat down. So I can't see you in the chat roll on Behance, but you can tune in also on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Derek Mitchell. Uh, and then I'll be able to see your comments if you guys wanna ask questions as I'm going. Uh, that's probably the best way to jump in on the conversation today since uh, the Behance server's down. So uh, let's dive in, let's get going here. So basically what I'm working on today is a project. Uh, let me hide this, this is from last night's impromptu stream with Paul Gowan, that was fun. Uh, all right, so what we're doing, uh, this is for Northern Pines Golf Club. They're a local golf course here in town. Uh, really, really beautiful spot. And this is their website. So what I have to do is create an ad to represent this new brand that we've made. And uh, it's, it's just gonna be simple, super, super simple. It's going to go into this thing here. This is the, uh, it's a visitor's guide for the chambers, Chamber of Commerce here in Kalispell. And uh, basically it's gonna be a perfect bound. It's gonna be a perfect bound. Uh, I don't know the final size of this magazine or book we could call it. All right, let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see. We've got this book here, and it's going to be a pullout map. So basically, inside of this book, it's going to fold open, and it's going to be a perforated where you can pull it out, and it's going to have uh, two different maps. One of them is going to be a uh, a things to do. And that's where this one's going to go is in this things to do position. Uh, and they also have a Glacier Park map as well. So uh, it's going to be inside of this book. So final ad size for this, and this is a real project. Like this is actually going to print and it's due um, tomorrow for me. So I'm going to send it to him today so we can get some feedback and uh, we'll get going. So uh, let's see. The final ad is 4.62 inches by 2.95 inches. And it looks like, let's see. I can't, I, she was supposed to send me a photo of it. Actually, she took a photo of so I can kind of see if what I'm designing around, but we're just going to kind of go for it and, and get something close, get something started. And, uh, typically depending on the ad and what you're doing, you might want to start this project in InDesign. Uh, we could do that today. I'm probably trying to decide if I need to just get this done and start going, or if we want to kind of learn a little bit as we go and jump into InDesign. So the other thing that I notice, uh, this doesn't need a bleed, okay? So I don't need to make it bigger. We're not gonna trim it back. It's gonna be the exact size. So I don't need to worry about a bleed on this. Uh, a bleed, for those of you who don't know, when you're printing, typically your ad would go, you know, if it goes past the page, they actually print the page bigger and then they trim it past, or trim it back. So that way the ink goes right to the edge. Uh, it's called a bleed, when you bleed past the edge and then trim it back. So, uh, but in this case, I don't need that. The final artwork, they want it as a CMYK vector PDF. We want all raster images to be 300 DPI and they need to be a 100% of their final printed size. So I need to make the, my dimensions exactly this size at 300 DPI. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I, I think I'm gonna start in Photoshop just because I'm feeling comfortable in that right now. I'm gonna create new and uh, I already forgot the ad size. Let's jump back over here real quick. Okay, 4.62, I'm gonna move this over here so I can keep it up. 4.62. I'm gonna click right up here on print on this tab here. All right, uh, sorry, I'm gonna click on print so that way it sends my resolution automatically to 300. I'm gonna change this blend mode or this color mode from RGB, which stands for red, green, and blue. That's uh, how screens display color. So we've got red lights, green lights, and blue lights, and they all blend light together 
to make the colors we see on screen. Well, in print, we're actually using ink. So we're using cyan, magenta, yellow, and black color, and it mixes those colors on paper. So we wanna make sure that as we're designing that the colors we're using represent what's possible in print as closely as possible, all right? So the width of this ad is uh, 4.62. We gotta make sure we're set to inches here on our measurements, which we are by 2.95. So the height's gonna be 2.95. 300 CMYK, everything else looks good here. Let's go ahead and click create. And this is our ad size. So if I hit command R, I can pull up my ruler and everything's in pixels because I've been doing a lot of web work. So I'm gonna come up here to Photoshop, go down to preferences and then down to units and rulers. Let's change our rulers from pixels to inches. All right, so I can see that this is 4.62. So if I pull my ruler out, this real quick. All right. Point <clears throat> six two is about about from here to here. So that's about how wide it is. It's not that big of an ad, just that wide, right? So uh, as you're looking at this thing, depending on your viewing distance, we don't have a lot of space to work with. So let's just start bringing in assets. That's how I like to work because I just start dropping things in. So uh, I already know the photo we want to use. So it's going to be actually one of these two depending on the ad layout. So this is one that I took of the golf course. Uh, this is actually just literally a minute down the road for me. So this is where I live guys is, this is what it looks like in Montana here. I love it. Uh, so we've got this ad. What I like about this and not ad this photo. What I like about this photo is there's lots of room down here for copy and it's dark. So I could easily throw text or a logo or things over that. So we'll probably play with this one. And then same thing with this one. What I like about this one is it actually shows some of the sand traps and shows how beautiful the fairways are. It's got some nice clouds for visual interest and the mountains. There's just a lot going on in this photo. Uh, plus down here on the right, uh, you can't really see it behind my photo or my video feed. Uh, down here, we see some pretty uh, beautiful homes. So it kind of nods to the fact that this is a pretty upper, upper end golf course. And um, without having to, you know, say that, it just shows it. It looks beautiful. All right. So let's see. So what we're going to do is we're going to just start making ads here. And right away, what I, what I should have done, I like to work by creating multiple variations of things. Um, and so sometimes I'll design in one file and then save it as a copy. Sometimes I'll make multiple artboards inside of one document. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just create an artboard from this right now. Make a new layer. I'm just going to fill it. doesn't matter. Now I can create an artboard from layers. I'm going to call this V1 for version 1. And I need to make sure that that didn't just change my sizing. So up here, confirming 4.62 inches by 2.95 inches. Okay, we're good. All right, this is pink layer. We don't need that. Let's start with this version first. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that photo right in here from my finder window, it's off screen. Let's scale it up a little bit. So, uh, lots of ways to work. I think I just need to focus for a minute, guys. Uh, feel free to jump in the chat if you have questions. I'm just going to kind of play around with this and just kind of see what happens. And then we can talk about it. Why does this look like garbage? So I'm going to sample some of the darker green from down here. 
And one thing that's way beyond the scope of what I'm doing right now, one thing you wanna pay attention to is the percentage of ink that goes down on the paper. And I forget, so let's say you have your four colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If they all print down at 100%, that'd be 400% ink coverage on the page, and you get what's called lift. Um, there's other terms for it, but basically what happens is the ink never dries, and so it sticks to each other, like the pages stick to each other. So depending on the book, depending on the ink and the process, there's gonna be different percentages. I feel like the last one I did, I was like 270 or 280 was the percentage of coverage. And so you have to be careful. I like to do things like this. Watch, let me show you. Um, I get my gradient tool up here in the options. I'm changing from a foreground. So whatever my foreground color is to transparent. Okay. Click. Okay. So if I sample up here and I get a blue color, so this gradient, I hit the letter G and I start to draw, it's going to go from my foreground color, which is blue to transparent. Hey, what's up? Uh, over on YouTube. Thanks for joining in. Uh, and so I'm going to step back here. I'm going to get my gradient tool, click and drag, and then hold down shift. And I started just above where this line is. So it kind of hides, creates a, a perfect seam, right? Um, now, if I were to change this blend mode to multiply, see how that seam comes back and it multiplies the ink coverage right here. So you can get into parts where you're going to run into trouble on the ad. Again, way beyond the scope of what I'm just trying to do today. I'm just trying to get this thing done. Um, so I like, I like what's happening here. All right. Let's, um, maybe come in from the side just a little bit, kind of a little bit of vignetting. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. So now we got to bring in some text and a logo. So I already have their logo pulled up like any good cooking show. I already have a cake baked in the oven here. I'm going to grab this logo copy it. I'm an illustrator now. Jump back over to Photoshop and throw it in here. I'm going to leave it as a smart object so it retains its scalability, its vector data so I can scale it way up or way down. Now, given the size of this, there's a couple ways we could approach this and I'll probably end up printing this. Oh, I was going to bring my printer up. I print to a wireless printer downstairs. Uh, but de depending on Thing. Again, the size, if we want to get really obnoxious with it, uh, there's a few things we can do. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to start throwing in assets. Okay. And then we'll start creating some different looks, some different versions. And don't forget to save your work. <laughs> um, let's see. This is the Northern Pines Chamber ad. All right. And let's throw this ads folder chamber map design files we'll stash it in here all right so now we need some phone numbers and information and stuff let's grab their web address let's just paste it in here and i don't know gosh it's been i always take off the extra stuff up front oh everybody knows right we don't need the http colon and all that garbage it just takes up extra space let's make it white Font is this? This is probably from last night when I was designing live. What size is this too? We want to make it oh four point. That's tiny. We want to make it at least six point. Nothing smaller than that. And because we're reversed out on a magazine, uh, we're trying to print white. Well, I guess that wouldn't be printing. You're printing all the ink around the white, and it's going to want to bleed in on itself. So we're going to want to make this even bigger especially because their target demographic is probably 45 plus uh, as far as age. So people who probably wear glasses. Uh, so we're going to want to make sure that they can see this. No problem. So that's eight point. Okay. And I don't want to crunch this in too far because then again, you're going to get that bleed. That semi bold. Okay. So that's headed the right direction here. Um, let me check out their website. I forget. I think we used Open Sans or something just generic. Yeah. Open Sans and Roboto. All right. Let's make the brand match. Open Sans. Let's do a semi bold. Maybe even a bold. Okay. 
Wow. Whoops. See what happened there? Check that out. When I was doing all my shortcuts, I accidentally threw a letter A in there. So I'm going to come back in here just in case. I always copy from a web address. I always open a new tab, paste it in there, and make sure that it works and it's the right web address before I throw it into print. <laughs> uh, that's a mistake you don't want to make. All right. Looks good. Because guaranteed, I mean, people proof it, but they're going to see all that and, you know, sometimes it those get missed. All right, Northern Pines Golf Club. We've got a we've got a website. Now we need a phone number. Uh, let's go back to um, where was that? Contact. There's a phone. Let's go grab that email address. And I don't think we need the full address because we're, we don't have a lot of room, but if we just said Kalispell, Montana, all right, so what size is this? Eight point, still pretty small. Let me open up my characters palette. I forget where, where we at. We are in uh, character. So we're still tracking this out. 50 points, we're gonna make it zero. All right, let's see here. Um, now, it's, now it's just basically we're just trying to build a puzzle here. It's a beautiful snowy day out right now. Snow's coming down, big old snowflakes. How are you guys doing? Anything new and exciting? to work all right so uh again just a reminder if you're just jumping in this is for a it's kind of a magazine um but this specific is gonna be a tiny tiny ad that comes out on on a map so yeah let's see do we need the email address do we need the web address and do we need it in this order maybe not let's rearrange some things here So the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my rectangle tool, the letter U. I'm just gonna click and drag. And my width up top, I'm gonna set it to 0.25 IN for inches. Let's try that again. There we go. Height, I don't really care about. I just want the width. Uh, and I do that to kind of build in a margin. So I'm gonna hit, I've got this little shape. Let's just change the color so we can see it. Command A to highlight my entire canvas. I'm in Photoshop. Yes, I could and maybe should be doing this in InDesign as an ad. Uh, I'll, I might reverse engineer that for you. But right now I'm just thinking in Photoshop because there's some things in blending I want to do that just are easier in Photoshop. So uh, typically though, if you're, if you're making an ad and you're working with text for print, InDesign is the way to go. All right, so I've got my uh, shape selected. I've got my canvas selected by hitting command A or going up here to select all. Okay. And now that's going to give me the option here in the control bar to align left. Okay. 
I'm going to drag down the guide. And I don't think snapping is turned on. So let's come up here to view. Let's go down to snap. There we go. So that's a quarter inch on the left. Same thing on the right. Quarter inch on the right. And while we're making guides, we might as well throw it on the top as well. Again, guys, there's so many ways to work. This is just one that I've found that, I don't know, helps me. All right, so that should be a quarter inch margin here. So we're going to stash our text here on the bottom, but we're going to give ourselves some space. I'm going to make my logo. I'm trying to decide if I want it to line to the descenders or to the X to the baseline here. How's it look? How's it feel? All right. Looking good. Head in the right direction. Okay, so there's an option. I don't want to beat it up too much. So there's a version. Uh, because I'm working with artboards, I can come up here and click on V1 in my layers panel. So it's just, it's just kind of like working with a group. So there's a few things I can do. I can right click and duplicate the artboard. I like to hit Command J. It just jump cuts it up into a new layer. Uh, and you can do that with layers, with type, with groups, in this case with artboards. So now I've got V1 copy. So let's rename that to V2. Okay, uh, if you're interested, there's also a thing called layer comps. So with layer comps, you can change the state of anything you want here. Click down here to add a new layer comp. Okay, and maybe we turn these on and maybe we turn this guy off over here and then add another layer comp. Okay, and then I can click on this and it's gonna remember what was turned on and what was turned off in these layer comps. And then you go down here to file, down to export, layer comps to files and it'll run through all those different layer comps and spit them out for you. So that's another way to work if you're trying to get multiple ideas in one document. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these for right now. Let's turn these layers back on. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try some other looks here. Um, although I'm pretty happy with that and honestly we're kind of in a hurry so I could, I could just ship it off but let's just push it a little bit further. Um, let's play around with font. Awesome. I haven't done that in a long time. So I'm gonna look up font. Awesome cheat sheet. Font awesome is like an icon font. Um, and this might, uh, they've got a new version that I don't have installed. So this might break a little bit for me, but let's, let's just give it a try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for, I'm going to hit command F and I'm looking for a desktop computer. Though honestly, everything's on mobile these days. Maybe I should be looking for mobile. There we go. So I'm going to highlight this icon right there. Maybe. Command C to copy that icon. I'm going to come over here in front of the web address and paste it or not. <laughs> Let's try this again. Uh, try to appear first. So I saw that copied on my desktop, my clipboard. Let's see what's going on. There we go. I think I got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to click in front of here and paste it hit space. And now you can see it's got this X through it because it's trying to display that GIF, uh, which is a font character. Like the letter A is a GIF, right? Um, not a GIF, glyph. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down to uh, the font and we're going to change this to uh, font awesome, which I already have loaded. Okay. 
And now it sees that that font, that glyph is the desktop icon. Make sense? All right. So we've got that. Now let's go grab an email address, which would be an, as much as you would think email, it's actually envelope, 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 tomato, tomato, whatever. All right. So let's see which one looks the best. Let's grab this guy. I'm going to double click on it. So it's highlighted in the web browser. Command C to copy that. Paste it in front here. Let's change this back to font. Awesome. And I got to double check that I'm using the right font here. Oh, open sans. Good. Okay. So we've got an envelope. We've got desktop. We need a phone. So do we want phone or mobile? I don't know. Let's see. Headphones, headphones, microphones, telephone, phone. There it is. All right. Awesome. All right, and then we need an address, like a pin, like a map marker. So let's, what's that gonna be? Probably a pin, maybe. Map pin. I'm gonna have to make one if I don't see the right kind. Map marker. All right, that's what I was looking for. All right, so the next thing that I'm seeing that's kind of annoying is these are all different widths, right? So this is not a flush left a line like I'd like it to be, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna copy these, Command X to copy and cut them at the same time. I'm gonna hit Enter. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna click once and then paste and then hit enter on my 10 key keyboard. We do it to all these. Command X. Come on. All right, now I'm just going to drag these down. And they're a little close. I'm just trying to get them into place. All right, the next issue is now these are really close to the edge. So we're going to grab this whole thing, bring it to the right. Give us even more space. Maybe shrink these down a little bit. They're at eight point. Let's drop them down to six. And I'm just gonna nudge them into place with my arrow keys just to kind of get them visually where I want them to be. Pretty darn close. All right, how's that look? It's not bad, not bad. Those lines are a little close together. I might spread them out a little bit. So I'm gonna highlight all of them. Come over here to my letting. It's at 9.39, let's Bump this up to 11 and just see, that's better. Now we gotta realign everything. So let's look at our typography first and make sure we're happy with it. When you're moving things with the arrow keys, it'll go one pixel at a time. If you hold down the shift key, it'll go 10 pixels at a time, which is kind of nice to speed things up. And nudging stuff around. All right, how's that look? Is that better? And I don't care that this phone icon is now a different point size than the others. I'm looking at visually, like, does it look all right? If I need to make it a little bit bigger, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Make 
makes sense. All right. Cool. All right. I don't want to beat that up too much. Um, you know, I, if I wanted to, maybe we sample some of this green or maybe the yellow from the field as an idea. I don't know. I'm not sure if I like the colored icons or not. So what we're going to do, instead of changing them all one at a time, I'm going to grab them over here in my layers, shift click, command G to group them all. And then I'm just going to do a color overlay. Or I could grab all these shift click command. Nope. Just kidding. Can't do it that way. All right. So we're going to throw a layer star style on the group. Um, thanks. I learned so much here. I'm glad you're learning, uh, having fun. I'm actually, I'm actually working. <laughs> I got to get this ad done. Uh, so I've got this group with these icons in it right here. They're all technically, these are a font. They're a text, uh, from a font called font. Awesome. Right? So it's just showing icons. I'm gonna come down here to the effects and I'm going to add a color overlay so I can change them once and I can experiment with the color without having to go through each one and try and figure out what I like. So, um, Got to move my windows a little bit. How about the sand trap? Oh, that's kind of classy. I don't mind that. I don't mind that kind of sand color. Maybe I should do that with the font too. Okay, here's the deal though. This is gonna be printed so tiny. I don't want to add colors on top of this because then if the registration's off just even a little bit, it gets kind of weird with fonts. So typically you want to make it like all white or a percentage of black. So all black, just black ink, no cyan, magenta, or yellow. And you want it to be a percentage like... Um, you know, zero being white all the way up to 100% black being black. Um, yeah, I did. Well, I didn't make the Northern Pines logo. I inherited that uh, from them. I touched it up a little bit. The original logo was kind of a mess. Um, so I, I I tweaked it a little bit, but the idea was from them. So um, it was a group effort. Okay, so I don't mind that. I don't mind those icons like that. Um, okay, so there's an idea. There's a look. Now, uh, of these two, uh, okay, I'm going to grab this V2 right here. I'm going to come over here and command J to clone that. Let's rename it to V3. Okay. And this time we're just going to change the photo. So I'm going to click in here. Uh, it's a smart object. I could actually double click in here. Uh, now I don't know how I brought the smart object in. This might update all of them. We'll see. Oh, it's because I'm doing it that way. All right, forget it. We'll just do it this way. That's pretty. Okay, so now we got to change this green down here. And what I'm going to do, instead of redrawing this gradient, I'm going to click up here under the lock menu. So you see lock and you get this checkerboard, you've got a paintbrush and some different things. I'm clicking on the checkerboard. I wish I could zoom in closer, but I can't, uh, at least the way I'm broadcasting this now. So, um, so I'm locking all the pixel data. So now I can grab, say like this blue, uh, let's grab from up. I'm gonna turn it off for a second so I can get as close to down here, this dark, there we go. I'll turn this back on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this layer with this transparency locked. And so just the pixels will be filled. None of the transparency above it will be filled. So I'm going to come up here to edit, fill with the foreground color, which is this blue we just sampled. And I'll click OK. Boom. And it remembered that gradation. That's even the right word. It remembered that like if the pixel was only 50% filled with alpha, transparency it'll only fill it with 50 percent of blue or green or whatever like i could sample this green up here and do the same thing and you can see it just refills it because i've got this transparency locked um i'm using 2021 uh right now so up here you can see uh photoshop 2021 which is the creative cloud um all right let's undo undo there we go okay cool i like that i've still got the sand trap color on those icons. That's clean. We've got the phone number, email. Okay. Now what we're going to do is another version, command J, 
rename this to V4. And we're gonna make one that's just obnoxious, all right? Because, you know, everybody wants their logo to be as huge as possible. It's just how it is. And we're gonna add a drop shadow. Drop shadows, guys. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna we're gonna tame this a little bit. And we're not gonna go straight black with it. We're gonna actually sample some blue. Click OK, we're on multiply. Uh, we don't want it spread so far. We just want it to pop off the page just the tiniest of little bits here. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, guys. This might be a bad idea. <laughs> uh, almost always, if you're putting a drop shadow on a logo, it's a bad idea. I'm just going to tell you right now. Um, but it's all right. We're 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 exploring. We're, we're experimenting. We're trying to make it like not too over the top. Okay, now here's the problem. Uh, this photo has wildlife. Look at, look at these birds just chilling in the pond. That's awesome. So we don't want to cover them up. So let's, let's see what happens here. Let's lose that ridiculous drop shadow. Maybe let's, let's fill it though. Let's do a um, color overlay. Let's just see how that looks. Turn our effect back on. Take off the drop shadow. Ugh. I don't know. I kind of liked white better. We're going to keep going though. All right. Now what we're going to do, let's pay attention to our left edge here. Let's pay attention to our grids and our guides. We're going to drop a guide down next to this logo. So visually, our text. Lines up. And this is such a heavy weighted item. Maybe we want it to line up to this text here instead. I don't know. We'll go with it there. I kind of like how there's space around these, these guys. Uh, get this photo just a tiny bit larger here. There's an idea. Let's just duplicate this one. Command J. Rename it to V5. And um, they don't have to see all five versions of this. Sometimes it's easier just for you to kind of like, here's the deal. If you try to make the one like absolutely perfect ad, you might get hung up, you know, trying to, to get it perfect. But by doing this, now I can step back and be like, okay, which one captures my attention? And right away, I'm like, oh man, I love how these clouds look. I just love the visual interest. Um, you know, this might be the ad. There's a lot going on here, but it, it tells the story. I like that. Um, gosh, it's tough, isn't it? I don't know. For me, it's difficult. You guys are probably professionals, but it's all right. Uh, let's see. I don't like the white version, even though it's clean. Uh... could almost make this look like it's a tree on the course. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good about these. Uh, the next thing I need to do is print them so I can hold them up and see if they look okay or not. Uh, watching from Kenya. That's fantastic. Thanks for tuning in. 
Uh, happy to have you here. All right, so I don't know what else I want to do for this thing. Um, Size-wise, I think... Okay, so the other, the other thing we were going to do... Oh, I forgot I was going to do that version. All right, so if I go back to the website... And I just kind of learned more about Northern Pines. All right. <clears throat> so if I scroll down here, we can see that it was built in 1996, designed by Andy North, two-time U.S. champion. Uh, let's see. It's a combination of Lynx, native grasses, and rolling fairways. All right. So I feel like this is good text I could copy. Um, let's see. How do I want to loop in this text, though? All right, let's let's grab this version, version three, and I'm gonna click the plus down here to throw it down below. And it didn't bring the artwork with me. I forget. Can I turn this on? Uh, there's a way to copy. Oh, I think I'm thinking about Illustrator. There's a way to copy the artwork when you do it. Whatever. We're just going to do it a different way. I'm going to undo that. Command Z. Um, I'm going to grab, I'm going to click right up here on V3. Hold on Option. Then I'm going to click. Then I'm going to drag. Then I'm going to hold down Shift once I get started to snap it back in line. Uh, and then I'll let go. Command Zero to get my view back to 100% here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna rename this um, V3 copy, uh, V3B maybe? I don't know, I, I tried to get too complicated with my naming, but but I do, <laughs> I always overthink it. Um, so A and B, okay, so what I'm thinking here for this would be, uh, if I had to drop some text in here, how are we gonna do it? And I don't really wanna hide the birds, uh, and we got that text. So I'm going to click and then drag to make a text box. Uh, I hit the letter T first to get my type tool. Click and drag so I have a text box. It's going to fill it with lorem ipsum, just placeholder text. But since I already have text on my clipboard, I'm going to hit command V to paste what I copied from the website. All right. Let's change this. Type. Uh, what am I thinking? I want to change... Oh, you know what I'm doing? I think I have Command Shift K. I did. Okay. I don't even know why I know that shortcut, but Command Shift K changes from caps. Like f it's called faux caps, F A U X, like faux finish. Faux caps, or the way the text came in. That's over here under, if I go to character, my character window, uh, down here, all caps. So basically, Command Shift K makes it, forces it to be all capital letters. Or you can just come down here under character. If you don't see it, make sure you have show options turned on, and then you can turn that on and off. All right. Put you back over here where you belong. All right. So, eight point bold. Let's change this to semi bold, maybe even regular. Remember, we're printing white reversed out, right? So, all the ink is going to want to bleed in on itself. So, even though we're printing it at semi bold, it's going to come off looking more like regular. Uh, let's come over here and change our letting, which you can't see because it's behind my head. Here, I'll, I'll bring this over here so you can see it. All right, we're going to change our letting to, I'm just going to put it on auto and see what it thinks it should be. That's not bad. Um, eight. Let's make this 10 and see what happens. Okay, so I'm digging how this is shaping up. I also like how this negative space around the tree and the text kind of flows nicely around it. Uh, happy, happy accident here. So there's a few ways we can get this to stand off. We can add contrast behind the text. We can't make the text any wider. It's all the way 100% white. So to make it more legible, we either need to add a drop shadow, which I wouldn't recommend to text, or we need to darken the background. So there's a few ways we can do this. There's a lot of ways we can do this. I'm going to grab this image here. I'm going to 
Command J to make a copy. I'm gonna change the blend mode to, no, I'm not. I am going to add a level adjustment. So Command L, which is the same as coming up here to image adjustments and then down to levels right here. Okay, and we're gonna crunch down the image. Okay, so we're gonna grab this white output level slider and we're just gonna drag it down so it gets dark, okay? Now, what I don't like about doing it this way is it kind of looks muddy in the grays versus if I change the blend mode to multiply, it, it still makes it feel rich, but because this is print and we don't wanna oversaturate the ink levels, we wanna be careful with how we do this, okay? So I'm gonna change this back to normal blend mode even though I don't like it. <laughs> if I was working on the web, I'd, I'd make it multiply so it just looks richer, okay? Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a mask. So we, we have this image that's being adjusted by a smart filter, okay? And this image is, is a clone above the other image. And what we're gonna do is add a mask. So down here, I'm gonna click on this mask button. Oh, you can't see it. Let me turn off my head. You guys don't need to see my face. All right, uh, so what we're gonna do, we are going to, we're, we're on this layer here, this adjustment layer, or this, this duplicated photo image. I'm gonna add a mask down here. And rather than just clicking on it like this and just adding an empty mask, I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna hold down option and then click. And what it's gonna do is fill my mask with black. So now none of this is showing yet. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure I'm on my mask. A few things I could do is I could get a nice soft brush, hit the letter B to get my brush tool. And uh, it's a tiny, tiny brush right now. So let's go ahead and jump up here to brushes and let's make sure that it's a nice, big, soft, round brush, okay? So now I'm making it even bigger and I'm using the, the bracket key next to letter P on my keyboard to make the brush bigger. There's other ways to do it, this is how I do it. All right, and if I paint with white, my foreground color is white on this mask, as I paint, it's going to reveal this darker image, okay? So I could come in here and I could selectively paint. That's one way to do it. Oh, it looks kind of gross with those grays. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna change the blend mode to multiply. Okay, and I'm gonna back this down a little bit. This layer, I'm gonna come up here to the opacity and scrub it down just a tiny bit, okay? So it's not quite so like, ah, right? Um, but obviously I didn't paint that in very carefully. I'm gonna fill this mask back with black. Black is my background color, so I can hit Command delete to fill it with the background or option delete to fill it with the foreground. All right. So we're filling this with the background, which is black letter G to get my gradient. And now what we're going to do is I want to subtly paint back in. Um, you guys couldn't see me doing hand motions, <laughs> subtly paint back in <laughs> the, uh, over this mask here. So, um, all right, we can do this. Maybe I can do this can't quite do this. I'm trying to grab my image. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right, here we go. So what we're going to do, uh, we are going to get my gradient tool and I'm painting or drawing or doing a gradient from foreground to transparent with white. Okay. So I'm going to click and drag off campus, off canvas here and see how it just kind of subtly burns in the sky a little bit. Boom, all right, I'm happy with that. I could make it stand off a little bit more behind here. Um, scrub this down a little bit. All right, I'm happy with that. I think that looks classy. All right, now let's just text. I'm just reading the text real quick to make sure that I don't have any typos. Lynx Golf, native grasses, rolling fairways. Cool, I like that. I think it looks sharp. Um, <laughs> they're gonna make it hard for them to be able to choose what they wanna do. Oh, what happened down here? Oh, it was my, Never mind. I'm getting tired. All right, cool. Looking good, looking good. What else can we do, guys? Let's see, do we wanna add that text to this other version? Ah. I'm a huge fan of minimalism. Like, I like the idea of just this simple, simple, simple ad. Um, all right, so now what I need to do is I need to print these, okay? I need to check it and 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 see if it's gonna print okay. Um, 
Oh, I should have brought my printer up. Let's just do it. Oh, wow, it's really snowing like crazy outside. Let's see if you guys could see that. How you guys doing? How's things? What's up? Let's see if this works. Nope. <laughs> Yes, check it out. Uh, the snow's not really showing very good. There we go. Nice snowy day outside. All right, let's get back to work. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do now is I am gonna print this stuff. So here's how we're gonna do it. Sorry, I kind of zoned out there for a minute. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to show this for you. Uh, I'm just gonna hit command, command P. Go to file print on on this here, uh, let's see. I kind of don't mind that these are all getting cropped off. It'll give me an idea of how this is gonna look good enough without having to print all of them per se. These are the ones I'm interested in seeing anyway. All right, so I'm gonna send to my printer downstairs. Uh, let's go ahead and I can change print settings. I can do borderless on this printer, which will give me more to look at. Low ink, color sync. I'm not worried about color matching on this one quite yet. I just want to make sure that Proceed. Okay, so I'll print that one, and then uh, hopefully it prints right. Oh, geez, you guys can't see what I'm doing. That's all right. I didn't do much. I'm just printing things. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so we're gonna come back in here. Go to file. Go to print. I think there we go. Same thing. So all I did, you couldn't see this before is in this window because I'm using artboards. I was just moving this around to kind of see the important pieces that I wanted to look at how it prints up. If you're designing something for print, print it. Make sure it looks good. All right. Uh, let me see. Hopefully it's printing. All right. So... It's ready to print, it's connected to the printer, it's stalling on me right now. So, um, and work doesn't stop. I actually just got a text. I need to jump on another call here for a Zoom call. Um, so what we're gonna do, hopefully, hopefully that was insightful. Um, you guys can see my workflow. Uh, let's just pretend that this is done and they are ready to send this to press now, okay? Let's just pretend like they picked this V3B, all right? Uh, which, Lots of ways to export this. I'm in Photoshop right now. I can literally come over here to the side. It's just like a file, just like a, a folder, um, but it's an artboard. I can right click on this and I can do a quick export or I can do an export as. I'll click export as. Let's just see what options this gives me. All right, so I know they want a PDF. And unfortunately, I don't have that option doing it this way. So we're gonna cancel. Let's come up here to file, export, artboards to PDF. All right. 
Let's stash this. Northern Pines adds chamber map file sent. So this is just a comp. This is not a final. If it was the final, I would put only whatever was sent to press in the final folder. So there's no confusion when I go back, what was the actual final that was sent? And I don't name things final, final, final version two for real final as much as I want to. Um, I, stip, I, I, stare, I I typically give it a version and we just go version. So we know that the last one was version, you know, 2.5 was the one that went to press or whatever. And it's in this finals folder. So I'm going to go to comps though, cause it's just a comp. I'll click open. Uh, the prefix, Northern Pines Chamber Add. Okay. And then include overlapping areas, artboard content only. I don't want it to print larger than the artboards. Uh, export selected artboard. So I only have this one selected, so it should only export that one. Um, let's see. JPEG quality. We want to max this out. It's for press. Include ICC profile. Include artboard name. Reverse page order. Let's run it. See what it does here. That makes me nervous. All right, su su successful. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna jump over here and let's just see what it gave us. Adds, chamber map, file sent, comps. Boom, it's a PDF. It's 40 megabytes for a little tiny thing. So I'm sure this is high quality, but let's just go ahead and open it up to make sure. All right, look at that. Look at that beautiful ad that we made. Um, sorry, now I'm struggling with viewing it and there we go, that's the one I wanted. All right, look at that. We did it, we made an ad guys. Um, I'm going to go check the prints. I got to jump on a zoom call. Hopefully this is good. Uh, I'll send this off for approval from the client. Uh, typically I wouldn't send the 40 megabyte version if we're just running comps. Let's just go ahead and do this real quick. Let's go to file export artboards to files this time, not PDF, but these are just to files so we can get approval artboards to files. Uh, I'm going to name this comps or comp export selected artboards. I'm going to turn this off quality in the JPEG. We'll put it at like eight. It's not a big deal. We'll leave it as a JPEG, not a PDF. It'll compress it down further. Let's make sure this is thrown it to the right spot. It's not file sent comps and we'll run it. Oh, the other thing I should do Okay, so the clients are going to see this. Ah, oh, that's hard. Okay. Sometimes I'll send them images as an RGB because I know they're looking at it on screen. The problem is it's going to look really rich and vibrant and then they get it in press and it's like, it looks just flat and dull. So sometimes I'll include the color profile as CMYK so it looks dull on the email as well. Sometimes I'll let it run through as an RGB. I don't know. I, I don't have a hard and fast rule for you on that. I kind of make it up as I go. So we really didn't get into InDesign much today. Um, but InDesign, if you're gonna be doing a lot more text than this, I would recommend then using InDesign instead. And uh, similar process, create new, right? Create your file size. Uh, the difference being if you have a bleed down here, you've got these bleed and slug settings, which is really, really nice for going to press. Um, so that's one thing you would do differently. Click create. I don't know if you guys have any experience with InDesign or not. Very, very, very similar. Uh, InDesign's more of a container though. So you, you design your graphics in Photoshop and then bring them into InDesign and then use text layout tools and stuff like that. But check it out. If you guys are interested in becoming a professional graphic designer and you're interested in print, you're definitely gonna wanna become experienced with InDesign. So we'll, we'll do more tutorials on InDesign in the future. But for now, yeah, the file size that InDesign puts out is definitely, um, a bonus as well. So, uh, yeah. And then I could have easily done a lot of this in illustrator too. So at the end of the day, it's not really what you use to create the art. It's that when you output the artwork that you do it in the exact file size and dimensions that the press asked for so that we don't have any surprises. All right. So now let's go back to my folder 
and let's go to these comps. And so this PDF was 50, 40.8 megabytes. This JPEG is going to be like three, one, right? Okay. So now you can see that it spit out all these layer styles or these um, artboards. So then we've got the title and then the artboard name came with it. So version five, version four, right? So now I can send this to the client and say, hey, here's some ideas. What do you think? And you can see how they look kind of faded and gross. And that's because uh, it's in CMYK for press, for print. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna send these to my client. I've got a Zoom call and uh, I'm gonna bounce. So thanks guys for tuning in, for joining. If you want to watch this again, the replay will be up and you can play it back if you want to faster or slower. If you missed a part that I was talking about, you can speed up till you catch that point. Uh, you can play it back at half speed if you need to. Um, all the shortcuts should be down below as you watch. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video channel wherever you're watching from so you can stay, uh, stay tuned for more lives. I'm going live about three times a week at least. Uh, so we'll have more lives coming up here soon. And then if you're interested in learning even more about graphic design in more of a succinct, like <laughs> exactly how to do it method, check out the links below to my graphic design bootcamp. It's a course where I teach you uh, the basics of Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop to make real world projects like this that clients will actually pay you for. And then I also have a vault membership as well. So if you go to derekmitchell.com forward slash vault, V-A-U-L-T, uh, it's a subscription, basically kind of like a Netflix of graphic design where all the courses that I've ever taught are in there. Plus you get access to me via Slack. So if you get stuck and need help, you can text me. We can stay in touch. Um, yeah, it's been awesome, guys. I really enjoy getting to go live. So jump in, stay tuned. Also subscribe to my newsletter, email newsletter. Uh, there should be, should be a link below. And uh, I will see you in the next live. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. I uh, hope you learned a lot of valuable information and I appreciate you sticking around to the very end. But before you go, just a couple things I want to remind you. The first is if you haven't already, feel free to like this video if you can, depending on where you're watching from, give it a thumbs up or subscribe or tap the bell or give it a follow if you can and uh, also maybe even just copy the link up in the browser and share it with a friend or post it to your Facebook page I'd really appreciate that uh, but again just want to say thanks for uh, sticking around and I'd love to continue going live as much as possible and helping you guys out so the best way that I can help you is by you commenting on the videos below I read those comments I engage with them as soon as I can if I can when I see them so if it's live I'll try and answer you right away if this is a replay you can still comment on the video and uh, I go back and I read those. So I just wanted to say thanks again for watching and let me know what you're working on. I'd love to help you out and hopefully we will see you in the next live. And to be sure you don't miss it, like, like this video and subscribe and follow and do the things. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.